good to look back on a, another world championship because we've just had another one in the books, the, the PDC version of the world championship and Peter Wright becoming a, a two-time world champion, beating Michael Smith in uh, Monday's final 7-5. And he joins fellow Scots, Jockey Wilson and Gary Anderson on two world titles. Does this make Peter the best Scottish player of all time? Ooh. And we talked a little bit online about this. Uh, I think that's part of why it's on the list right now. And he's closed the gap significantly on Gary Anderson, and maybe even more than I thought he would have just in winning this event because it's how he went about winning it. And not just that, how he went about those last 10 legs, averaging nearly 114. Okay, Michael Smith dropped off a little bit, and Michael Smith didn't put pressure on him from 2-0 up in the 10th set, where if he'd been able to throw in a good leg in any of those, he may have won and well, may have won that set at least to go up 6-4 and who knows what would have happened. But Peter Wright didn't do anything wrong for 10 legs. Peter Wright didn't have a leg that went more than 15 darts. He's shown that he's added something to his repertoire that wasn't there before. It wasn't there before he was able to beat Michael Van Garen two years ago. And a lot of that does come with confidence. But if you look at what the all-time greats have managed to do, what Phil Taylor is able to do when he was at his best, what Michael Van Garen was able to do for a good four or five years, what Gary Anderson was able to do for a couple of years, and that's be able to win regardless about what your opponent does and regardless about what you do on the day finding the way to win, to be able to scrap out a match when you're, or let me me scratch that, to scrap out a tournament when you're not at your best, like Peter Wright did at the Players' Championship Finals a few weeks ago, to be able to just bamboozle and pummel your opponents into submission and into confusion, like he did against Michael Van Gerwen at the match play six months ago, when he averaged about 110 in a long-form match. Uh, Granted, he just averaged 114 over, over 10 legs, Not as long as first to 16, but still shows the standard he can do against world-class opponents. There was nothing Michael Van Guren could do in Blackpool because Peter Wright was playing at that level that very few have been able to do. But also to be able to lift your game from nowhere like he did from 5-4 down and 2-love down in that uh, tenth set and be able to go from a player who's looking – clearly the second best player on the day and like he doesn't have what it's on the day what it's going to take to be able to just out of nowhere find those gears the, all of those three things that i just said are things that we hadn't seen from him before and we hadn't seen from almost anyone before and they're the things that legends do to be able to win an entire tournament when you're so far off your best to be able to destroy your opponents for an entire tournament or to be able to just lift your game out of nowhere when it's needed the most to be able to win the biggest title in world darts. That has now elevated Peter Wright, not just into the top 10 players of all time, but into a true legend tier of players like Phil Taylor, Michael Van Guren, and Gary Anderson. There's a couple others that you can throw in there as well. Raymond Van Barneveld at his best, obviously. And then you go back, um, uh, Eric Bristow and, few other players. I I can't comment as much on whether John Lowe could have done that because I didn't see John Lowe day in, day out. I've seen some video highlights, but at least from players from the last 15 years, there's not many that have been able to do all three of those things. Peter Wright can, and now his accomplishments and his CV is not that far off from Gary Anderson's. He might not be the best Scottish player right now, but it might not be long before he will be because he's catching up to everything uh, Gary has done and he's playing at such a higher level than Gary right now. And you think pretty soon he'll catch him and there's no reason to think he won't blow right on by. What a question to start 2022 with a question, I'll be honest, I didn't expect to be answering because on our last episode, I did back Peter Wright to make the final, but I did have going Price to defend the title. But it is Peter Wright who's not beaten going Price on the hockey, but he has beaten him to becoming a, a two-time world champion. And now having those two world titles on his CV, like you say, that really does propel him into that top 10 of all time conversation. And we've discussed it a few times in the last two years since Peter Wright's gone from having one TV ranking title to now six. And that's four players in the PDC that have done that. Phil Taylor... James Wade, Michael Van Gogh and Peter Wright as well. But I like the question and Scotland, three double world champions now with Jockey, Gary and and Peter. 
the top three Scottish players of all time. I, I don't think that's really up for debate. I think they are the, the top three to come from Scotland, but it is hard to compare eras. But if we're comparing Gary Anderson and, and Peter Wright, as you say, they've got quite similar CVs now. They've both got the two world titles. They've both got a world match play. They've both got a, a Players' Championship finals and a, a UK Open title. Peter's got a, a European Championship, but where it kind of switches a little bit is Gary Anderson having those two Premier League titles and two titles I want to mention as well from his BDO days in, in 2007, winning the International Darts League and the World Darts Trophy, two events which were cross-code events. They had BDO and PDC players and he beat Phil Taylor in the final, which was a best of 13 sets. So those achievements kind of get missed a little bit given the, the longevity that Gary Anderson has in the game. And I think that's why I'm just giving him the edge at the moment over Peter Wright. But I think it is close and, and take nothing away from Peter Wright because what he's been able to do in his career, which you go back 15 years, didn't look like it was ever going to happen. He wasn't playing darts 15 years ago. It's funny, we talk about longevity. Peter Wright's World Championship debut, 1995. Gary Anderson's 2002, but of course, Peter Wright didn't make another World Championship until 2010. Gary Anderson's been in, in 21 consecutive World Championships now, but what Peter Wright's done since he's come back, his first year on the Tour 2008, picking up £1,200 in prize money, and now he's the first player to twice pick up that £500,000 check, the biggest prize in darts he's picked up twice. It's an incredible story and the best Scottish player ever. Again, I think I have Gary Anderson ahead of, of Peter Wright, but you look at what Peter Wright could go on to achieve if he carries on the way he's going this year, that the world number one spot, him and Gerwin Price are very close now. That could even change as early as next month. And Peter's already got his eye on the Premier League. That's how tightly he wants to tick off. If he ticks off both of those things this year, I think the gap closes maybe completely. I don't know. But I think, yeah, Peter Wright, if he carries on the form he's going, he's got a, a real chance of, of finishing as the, the best Scottish player and maybe even a top five of all time player.